econometrics in practice level 2 in level 2 we will discuss instrumental variable regression reg regression discontinuity designs difference in difference estimators and some other things so uh, it's better to complete uh, listen watch previous videos and practice practice and practice so what are instrumental variables what are assumptions of instrumental variables how can we apply instrumental variables to real life problems from where we get our relevant instrumental variables there will be four to five videos on instrumental variable regression please watch these videos to understand this and read stock and watson chapter 12 to follow this you see we have discussed internal and external validity of a regression model in one of the video we, uh, i'll provide the link uh, in this video as well three threats to internal validity out of those five omitted variable bias you don't have data on a variable it's unobservable simultaneous causality that test score basically when you get poor test score you hire more teachers this will reduce class, uh, student teacher ratio so student teacher ratio uh, uh, decrease is because of low test score so whether test score is going to be determined by class size or class size is going to be determined by the uh, 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 test score we don't know whether foreign direct investment leads to more uh, GDP growth or GDP more GDP growth leads to more foreign direct investment we don't know and if your x variable is not measured uh, is uh, if x variable is measured with errors in all these scenarios your x variable is correlated with u which means your basic assumption that x and u are uncorrelated is violated now what is name of the game name of the game is that we need to differentiate uh, the, we need to separate the effect of y u uh, x from u which is uncorrelated basically x and u are correlated but some part of x is uncorrelated we need to find out that that part and for that we need to find a variable a proxy for x which is correlated with x but uncorrelated with u that variable if it satisfies this condition then that variable is called instrumental variable so uh, before i go uh, further on instrumental variable two important concepts endogeneity exogeneity literal meaning endogeneity determined within the system exogeneity determined with the uh, outside the system and very simple definition a variable x correlated with y is endogenous a variable x correlated with u is endogenous uh, uh, first endogenous is correlated with u exogenous which is uncorrelated with u but for more comprehensive study understanding of endogeneity and exogeneity read chapter 5 dynamic econometrics by david henry basically it's a very 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 useful concept but very difficult strong exogeneity super exogeneity weak exogeneity any we we can't uh, go in that detail at the moment that will be level 3 of econometrics where we may discuss these things okay <clears throat> let's go x is basically no correlated with u we need to find out that part of x which is uncorrelated with u and then we'll replace that part of x here so how do we achieve that we need to find a variable z which is correlated with x but uncorrelated with u if these two conditions are satisfied we say z is z is a relevant instrument z is a relevant instrument so what do we do there are two stage another another thing which we are going to discuss here is two stage least square first of all we are going to regress x and z so from this we get x hat so you see when we regress y on y hat yi is always equal to y hat plus u hat 
and u hat is basically y minus y hat. So this y hat is that part of uh, that part of y which is uncorrelated with u. So x hat uh, x is will be equal to x hat plus u. X hat will be that part of uh, uh, x which will be uncorrelated with u, and that's our uh, name of the game. That is x hat is equal to pi naught hat plus pi one uh, uh, pi one as z z. So we we get x hat at first stage and at second stage we regress y on x hat. Now this x hat is uncorrelated with u because you have decomposed x into two parts x hat plus u hat. This x basically from u hat u hat x minus. Basically this x part. It, this has been eliminated from u so it means u and x hat are independent of each other so this is second stage so that's why we call two stage least square okay fine well let's go let's move this will be my video number one uh, which will be uh, about the, just the basic concepts regress y on x by x and z regress y on x hat you will get beta 2 sls it's two stage that's why we call no use in place of covariance between y and z uh, uh, you see y is replaced here z so beta naught is constant covariance of beta naught and z will be zero this beta one is pre multiplied so you, it's parameter constant it may come outside this one and covariance between u and z by assumption is zero so beta one is equal to covariance of z divided by covariance of x and z y and z divided by v, this one when you uh, this is population we don't have population data from sample we have sample covariance sample covariance this is called beta one hat two sls so uh, when you have large sample size beta 1 hat approaches beta 1 this is called consistency property due to lot of large numbers and all that no let's take an example w uh, to understand what is simultaneous uh, causality you see quantity of uh, butter is basically this is this is a long story that uh, basically uh, uh, so uh, uh, right and uh, father and son basically uh, uh, Phillips Wright and Seoul Wright basically they try to uh, determine uh, tariff barrier on uh, oil and products. So quantity of price is function uh, qu quantity is function of price, and you see as we see that both uh, supply and demand are determined within the prices and the uh, supply and demand determined within the system. So both these two are endogenous variables, and what happen? You have a demand here. We have a demand here, Q, P, this is my demand level 1, D1, and supply level is this one, equilibrium point is this one. No, due to increase in income, let's say demand level increase, so supply level is remains same, this one. But if supply decrease, you will have a different point. If supply again increase, demand further increase, so you have this one, this one, this one, all these are equilibrium points when I trace it here so you will have these points which I show you here so from this you can't say that it's a demand equation or it's a supply equation observationally they are equivalent observationally they are equivalent so what right father and son whether son or whether uh, uh, father I don't know who, who thought this idea uh, basically this uh, this is uh, there is a controversy in history uh, 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 of uh, giving credit whether to father or to son so basically uh, they thought that try to find a variable which affects supply but not demand they they thought that rainfall is a variable which affects supply as in subcontinent we see tomato and onion prices they are basically supply uh, supply determined in general tomato and onion demand in uh, Pakistan Bangladesh uh, India that remains more or less same but supply supply is linked with the uh, uh, weather and uh, season as well so if a variable helps to shift supply but not demand 
what will be the case you see these blue points that will be a demand equation these three points that will be a demand equation so they, they basically try to find a variable which was uncorrelated with price but helps to determine uh, the, uh, the, uh, you see price no price is un, uh, un, uh, price is uh, 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 rainfall sorry rainfall is uncorrelated with other factors which affect price but pr uh, price and rainfall are correlated because lower uh, 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 lower the rainfall less the supply more the price so therefore they are correlated so they try to find out a factor which affects uh, the, uh, supply but not demand and in this way it is correlated with price sufficient uh, rainfall means less grazing means less butter means higher price so <clears throat> Uh, okay, uh, no. You see, uh, uh, in first stage, we'll regress uh, uh, price on rainfall, and then at second stage, we'll regress quantity of butter on price of butter. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll make it uh, simple uh, uh, in uh, coming slides. Okay. No, this is another story. That, uh, you have class size and test score, and uh, you see. If there is an earthquake, as in 2005, India, Pakistan has very serious earthquake. Those schools which are close to the center, the, the, the schools which are close to the center, basically they may have uh, the, the, the close to the epicenter of earthquake. The, the buildings which survive will have more class size, but they are unrelated with other factors. So you may consider earthquake as an instrument. Uh, uh, for class size and uh, 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 this is uncorrelated with U but correlated with class size and earthquake epicenter has nothing to do with other characteristics of parents incomes and all that so therefore this may be considered as a valid instrument okay let's move uh, further uh, okay this is the example which I was giving okay let's uh, inference inference about 2 SLS is very simple for large sample theory central limit theorem comes into play and your statist standard statistical inference for large sample is same as for multiple linear regression models you see this is SYZ which is sample mean which is sample mean and sample means follow normal by central limit theorem so therefore our standard statistical inference will remain same that beta had two SLS follows normal with mean beta 1 and variance beta 2 uh, beta SLS inference using 2 SLS is more or less same only difference is that don't take you, you need to take care of standard errors don't take standard errors of second stage rather use two stage least squared directly instead of estimating it one by one because when you estimate first stage least square and then you estimate second stage least square second stage least square does not incorporate first stage, stage least square standard errors into st second stage so there may be slight uh, slight uh, you see error in calculation of standard errors so when you apply two stage least square directly use your strata commands R commands and other software commands so what what do we say here okay this is our problem for this chapter that will try to find cigarette demand as a function of price of cigarettes whether increase in prices leads to lower demand in cigarettes this is basically beta 1 is elasticity this depends upon the elasticity what is elasticity but this price is also determined correlated with other factors uh, 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 so therefore this price may not be exogenous so we need to find out some instrument and that's that's what is our research question for this chapter we'll try to find out the answer of this question whether increasing cigarette prices leads to lower in demand of cigarettes so, so you see sales tax general sales tax at the national level increases prices but it is uncorrelated with some other factors so therefore it may be a valid instrument are cigarette specific tax that we will talk in our next video and it is co uncorrelated with other factors so two conditions are satisfied if sales tax is correlated with prices 
and uncorrelated with the other factors so we say that it is basically relevant and it is exogenous sales tax so at first stage we will regress cigarette prices on sales tax for 1995 data of US states uh, uh, this, this is 7 years 8 years data but we will first of all use only for 1 year data so at second stage you will have this one no minus 1.08 will remain same whether you estimate one stage second stage or you estimate it directly by two stage least square but standard errors may change sometimes by a small magnitude sometimes by a large magnitude so in this case if you regress x that is uh, average cigarette prices on cigarette uh, 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 taxes and second stage you estimate x hat uh, price of uh, per packet on uh, price per packet of uh, so demand uh, sorry quantity of per, uh, per, per packet on price per packet for year 1995 you will have two stage least square 0.33 will be your standard error but when you use instrumental variable regression in strata and similarly we will use in R and I will demonstrate it then you get slightly different standard errors so though this difference is very small at the, uh, in this case but it may be it may be large at others uh, in other cases so therefore please use two stage least square directly like this way instead of using stage by stage so that's that's uh, uh, what is the main message i'll try to summarize this i am what i am saying that you must have a relevant variable which is uncorrelated with x it should be un uh, uh, which should be correlated with x it should be uncorrelated with z uh, z and u should be uncorrelated two stage least square will be used at first stage you will try to get x hat and at second stage you will regress y on x hat instead of regressing y on x as in OLS Key, uh, the standard statistical inference remains same instead of using uh, the uh, uh, estimation one by one stage by stage use two stage least square directly so i hope this will help you in understanding the basic concepts of instrumental variable i will demonstrate more on it because you see cigarette demand is function of prices but income is not there income has a role so we'll discuss all these things in detail from where these valid valid instruments come from what is weak uh, uh, instrument what is strong instrument we will we'll, we'll apply some tests as well and we'll explore the concept of instrumental variable regression with the help of data very rigorously thank you for watching take care